Hey, financial warriors, welcome to the show. Now, the Bureau of Labor Statistics just released the CPI or Consumer Price Index figures for May 2022. If you don't know, Consumer Price Index, it measures inflation, which is how fast the prices of goods are rising from one year to another. And the rate for May 2022, okay, the rate at which goods rose in price from May 2021 to May 2022 was 8.6%, which is the highest so far this year and the highest inflation rate since 1981. But in this video, I am gonna tell you why that figure is a total lie. That's right, even though that inflation rate may sound high already, the actual figure for inflation that people feel when they look at their grocery bill or at their credit card bill or their monthly budget is likely much higher. And I'm also gonna show you how you can calculate your own customized inflation figures for your own household budget and the results may shock you. But first, if you want some good financial news to cheer yourself up, don't forget you can get six free stocks for signing up and depositing any amount of money with the brokerage app Webull through my links below. These stocks could be valued up to $12,600 together. Luck of the draw, what you get. And it's a great time to start investing if you've been thinking about it because the market is low right now. It will likely go lower, so some stocks may be on sale. So it is a great time to get in there. Link below if you're interested. So the inflation figure that was just released is called the Consumer Price Index for Urban and consumers or CPIU and often referred to just as CPI for short. This is the standard way inflation is measured and reported but it is controversial and this is because the way the Bureau of Labor Statistics has calculated the consumer price index has changed over the years and changed a lot. The Bureau of Labor Statistics says that they have removed biases that overstated the inflation rate and they say this because during the 80s and 90s they switched it from a cost of goods index to a cost of living index. CPI as a cost of goods index just measured a fixed basket of goods and how much they'd increased in price. But CPI as a cost of living index takes into account substitution, i.e. if a person had discovered that a certain product that they like to buy had increased in price, they may substitute that for a lower quality product that hadn't increased in price as much. Thus, their cost of living doesn't increase quite as much, but they have lowered their standard of living. And this allows the US government to report a lower inflation rate. In the words of economist John Williams, it no longer measures the cost of maintaining a constant standard of living. And in fact, John Williams' website shows you how high inflation would be today if you use the previous methods of calculating it. Using the 1990 method, it would be at about 12%, and using the 1980 method, it would be at about 16%. So that's the first lie, the way CPI is measured. Now let's look at the second lie, which I guess isn't really a lie, it's more of a limitation in trying to give one inflation figure for the entire US population. You know, people live in different areas where prices might be different, they have different spending habits on a weekly basis, some people like luxury items, some people buy budget items, and then also some people may have sudden expenses like high medical bills that others don't have. Now this lady, Christine Benz, wrote this article in Morningstar a while back where she explained the idea of having a customized inflation rate for the basket of goods that you commonly buy. And she actually made a spreadsheet where you can plug in your own numbers and check out your customized inflation rate. Now her spreadsheet had inflation figures from a few months ago. I also didn't like some of the categories she used. So inspired by her sheet, I made my own and I used the exact categories that the Bureau of Labor Statistics uses on its website. I basically turned this table from the Bureau of Labor Statistics into a spreadsheet that you can use to figure out your personal inflation rate. What I've discovered is pretty shocking and I'll put a link below so you can download this spreadsheet and try it out for yourself too. So you enter your budget on this left column. For me, it's about $1,250 a month at the grocery store, about $400 dining out, uh, $100 a week, so maybe $400 a month on gas, uh, $200 on fuel oil, although 
that price will probably rise considerably when I renew the account before the next heating season. $128 on electricity and $159 on gas. So right now you can see my inflation rate on the core areas of my budget that are actually subject to inflation is running at about 25%. That's using the current way of working it out. Then below, I've included John Williams' 1990 and 1980 calculations. Now this is very experimental. Uh, in his calculation, the 1990 rate is about 1.5 times the current rate, and the 1980 rate is about double the current rate. So that's what I've done, and I'm not totally familiar with the exact way that his calculations work. So just take this as a guide. It might be the case, but it's not something definite. Anyway, using his 1990 calculation, my inflation rate would be 38%, and his 1980 rate, it would be 51%. However, that is just the inflation rate for the core areas of my budget, which are actually subject to inflation. I have some other spending on a month-to-month -month basis, which is totally fixed. It doesn't change. For example, I have two very large items, which are my mortgage, which is $1,700 a month, and my car loan, which is $460 a month. Those do not change. The mortgage is at a 30-year fixed interest rate, so that figure will never change for 30 years, and the car loan is also at a fixed rate. That figure won't change for, I think it's five years, however long it lasts. So I'm gonna enter those in now. We have 460 for the car loan and 1,700 for the mortgage, and I'm gonna change the inflation rate on these to zero because they are fixed. They do not rise in price year over year. And that takes me to an overall inflation rate of 13%, which is still not quite double, but close to double the official rate, and using the 1990 method, we would be at around 20%, and using the 1980 method, we would be around 28%. Might be, this is kind of experimental, this part. Now, obviously, there are a few more things that I haven't included, like a cell phone plan, certain subscriptions like Netflix, which have actually increased in price, but they're very small money, you know, that's like $10 a month, 15, no, $17 a month, I don't know. It's small money nonetheless. Then we also have air travel, which I guess, you know, I don't do that on a month to month basis, but this year I have spent a little over $1,000 on air travel earlier in the year to go to Las Vegas. So you could say that uh, that's like adding in $100 a month. You could do that if you wanted to. Um, and then you've also got other things like entertainment or something like that. But to be honest, I don't really want to add that in because in times of high inflation, when the economy is bad, etc., uh, you might actually cut down on those kind of like extra items, that kind of discretionary spending. So really I wanna look at the core items. But anyway, I think that this chart gives you a good idea and then you've sort of got the experimental section which gives you those 1990 and 1980 figures based on John Williams' uh, calculations on his website. Now guys, you can download this Excel spreadsheet in the link below and if you try it out, try entering your stuff, do give me your inflation rate in the comments below and give me your 1980 and your 1990 inflation rates too. I'd love to hear them. Just remember, it's kind of experimental, more of a guide or an educational thing for fun. Uh, you don't need to necessarily take it as 100% accurate, but possibly somewhere near the truth. Also, don't forget to get your six free stocks from Webull in the link below. It's practically free money, guys. You might as well do it. With inflation raging, we need all the free money that we can get. Please subscribe if you're new and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.